Joined today on the bridge by Julian Baker. Her new album, Little Oblivions, is out February 26th on Matador. We do have that first taste, though, Faith Healer. Uh, and it just sounds so great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really excited about it. My understanding is that you started this song like two years ago. And that originally it was pretty much about, um, you know, vices and the fact that it's, it's not as simple as it sounds, kind of a double-edged sword. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, the first lyrics were actually like, you know, it's like, sometimes I miss being high. Like, doesn't everybody? Like, you know, <laughs> even people that, I don't know, had a kidney stone and their doctor gave them Demerol or whatever, have, they're like, oh, wow, I see how people could become drug addicts because when everything is insane in your life and you you know it's not the noble thing to say it's not the right thing to do but there is definitely this lizard brain part of me that's like well i could make this go away and obviously like it will go away temporarily and then be worse you know but like that's a very real sentiment but the more that i started examining like the wish for release or escape or something to like nullify or neutralize my fears and my problems i was like oh that goes that goes so much deeper into the psychological realm of like the things i try to control in my life you know so yeah it feels like when you came back you sort of expanded the definition of what a vice is yes yeah Yes. And yeah, so it, it and you actually have had a, a list up online, a political pundit, a preacher, a drug dealer, an energy healer. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Read between the lines a little bit there. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. And it's interesting. I've been because I think it's really easy, you know, when I put political pundit in there, I think it's really easy for people to think that I mean a specific person, but yeah. It's anybody that is trying to tell you that they have, that they're going to fix it all, that they have the right answer. If I just, if I just vote my conscience, if this person just gets into office, if this bill just gets passed, then I'll be at peace, you know, and it's not, that's not how it works, because <laughs> we're dealing with a whole bunch of complex and, uh, you know, difficult humans. Yeah, it's a it's a great song and a totally interesting video too oh thanks yeah uh, our guest today julian baker new album little oblivions coming february 26th you actually were um when you got started um your first record was really made without any anticipation that you would become capital j julian baker uh, it sort of took off on you. Uh, you ended up leaving college in 2016 with only like a semester left. And um, after three years of touring, you were pretty burned out. Yeah. And so. yeah. And so you went, um, you went back to school and finished your degree. Um, and I think you really took to it. And there was probably a fair amount of healing in that. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I love school. Like, I don't love, I hated high school. Um, but I, I like being in a room with other people who are engaging with the text and just kind of like talking about what the art they're engaging with means to them, you know, or being in a film class talking about what that film means. Like, that's fun to me. That's fun to me as an artist. And it was so helpful. And I think therapeutic to detach my worth or like my identity and the things that I think and the things that I do from being in the public, like sphere like, you know, of being, having spectators to all of the ideas that I have that I wish to share, you know, in an interview or on stage or in a song, like, I'm just writing a paper about what I think for my professor. And those are just the things that I honestly think. And I can just sort of 
peel back the layers of performance. But also I have to say this, it's like the only reason why I was able to do that though is because I've been afforded a great privilege by playing music to where I can be financially stable enough. Like so many people don't get that. Right. People don't like everybody doesn't get the time to like dive into their like their brain and like unpack all the layers of their ideologies you know I like people in my family 2020 has been a really difficult year they got laid off and when I talk to them they're like I don't I don't even really engage with politics anymore I'm trying to find a job that gives me insurance for my family and that's the end of the story and like I don't know so I feel grateful that I get to do that but also it's kind of like you know what it did for me is shrink my life to where I understand like how arbitrary the performance was anyway you know so my understanding is you've been making music in your attic yes (laughs) yeah yeah not all of it like not the record that was you know there there was no yeah but dreamers holiday and the blink 182 cover that i did and then i think there's like one more i worked on like a score for a documentary but it's all just like here (laughs) Um, i have a little like amateur rig and i've been trying to like teach myself how to do basic mixing and then of course i email all the files to my friend calvin who mixed the record and i'm like hey can you help me fix this Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, really, honestly, it's like being sequestered. Yeah. You know, like we all have been, has sort of opened you up to technology because you've always sort of, at a certain level, you've kept it at arm's length. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, oh, man. I, some people are like social media naturals and I'm not. I'm always like, you know, I wonder if it's a function of my social anxiety because I'm also in just face to face social interactions. I'm just, I don't, you know, um, but I do apologize to somebody this morning for my social behavior. <laughs> no, I, I'm constantly doing it. But yeah, like social media, I always try to just kind of like keep at arm's length and technology and stuff like that. And now I've, I mean, it's mostly the stuff like trying to understand the like, like the digital version of the process of making music. Um, but it's also been, you know, changing my fears I guess or my reservations around engaging with social media or uh, using like applications or like means to talk to people that I used to really not enjoy because they're my only option now to see the people I love you know I'm just too easily hurt to get engaged (laughs) you know I know I'm my I I know that I like you know advocate for like ego death a ton but I my ego is so sensitive and I'm like so afraid I'm gonna say something and hurt someone's feelings and then just be like oh I'm sorry I (laughs) know yeah I I get you so you have the studio in your attic but the record was recorded now correct me if I'm wrong because I had to piece this together but in Memphis was it at Ardent again no uh well I made some yeah, it's funny. It was like spread out over the course of a year, which is not how I've ever made a record. I've usually just been like seven days. These are how the songs are played. I come in, I play them, they're done. Um, I made some demos up here in, at like Trace Horse in Nashville. And then I took all of those songs down. We had made like 20 demos and I took them all down to Memphis to Young Avenue Sound. Um, and reworked and like messed with them finished them up there in Memphis you act as your own producer yeah yeah I mean it will and that's like a net I guess the terminology there is always like so weird because and it's one reason why I've been trying to make myself a whole bunch more proficient with like plugins and logic and uh digital audio work uh, stations but like yeah, I basically, like, I know how I want the song to sound, <laughs> and then I'll just say something to Calvin, like, can you make it sound more squiggly? And then 
<laughs> he like he knows the buttons to press to make that happen. Um, I mean, now, you know, I'm just I'm being hard on myself. But yeah, like, I don't exactly know how to accomplish like a certain band pass filter with like this kind of dynamic. Um, but yeah, I do act as my own producer. Um, pretty much to the extent that I that my knowledge allows, you know. So you actually, uh, and I'm going to kind of go around about to get to the end point here, but when you started out, you were actually in a punk band, Forrester. Yeah. And, that, and it was loud, you know. <laughs> um, and so now with this record, you're adding more instruments into, like this record is going to be a little bit of a surprise to your, to your fan base because there's more instruments, you played most of them, but it's a fuller band sound. Did it allow you to get some of the loud back? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, and it's like, you know, I I don't know why I had, I made sprained ankle. I didn't think anybody was gonna hear it. And I thought like, okay, well, like here's the songwriting process. I, I excel in minimalism and I'm gonna challenge myself to make that a characteristic of my art where I try to write the best songs, you know, like, cause people will say stuff like, if it doesn't, if it's not a good song without all the bells and whistles, then it's not a good song. And, but then you listen to stuff that is like incredibly produced with all these bizarre noises in there. And I was like, why would I limit my love of music and sound in this way to like fake serve the poetry of the song? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it helped. It, I, I'm happy that there are a whole bunch more ambitious percussive elements and yeah, it's funny you mentioned Forrester because I, I did play most of the instruments on the record, but live and like for all the live like COVID aware sessions we've been doing, um, Matthew Gilliam, who played drums with me in Forrester is playing drums with me now. And that feels really cool, you know, um, as kind of like back to your roots punk as that is it's like dude's my best friend i've known him since i was like 13 i'm super happy about it you know and now i have a reason to make music with this musician who you know he's got a great drum brain but i played music with no drums and now i get to play with him again and i'm so happy our guest today is Julian Baker. The new album, Little Oblivions, is out February 26th on Matador. Uh, we do have the one song, Faith Healer, which is a really exciting taste of what's to come. You know, when you were a kid, you tried piano, but life, it, my impression is that life changed for you when your dad bought a guitar. Yes. Well, and it's like, you know, I loved piano. I was good at picking things up by ear. I was the worst piano student ever. I can't, I still can't read shape notes as <laughs> I can't read sheet music um but like yeah I, and I think I don't know I've gotten to where I love I oscillate between the two you know there's a lot of piano on turn out the lights because I was back in Memphis around a, there was a piano in my house and uh unfortunately who knew it costs a ton of money to move a piano over county lines <laughs> like because if it's far enough away there's like some huge so I don't have my piano around anymore so I'm writing more with guitar you know it's like it ends up being a function of your environment but I think with the guitar you know when my dad got it it's like well I wanted to play guitar music because my friends were into things that we thought were hard but now obviously are not it was like you know Green Day I wanted to play there's no piano in Green Day Piano is for soft music. Um, you know, fortunately, I woke up to the fact that you can <laughs> play acceptable piano music and everything doesn't have to be bar chords, but you know, I was in fourth grade, so. Um, yeah, but it did, I, I don't know. It's also being in quarantine has helped me like, I haven't been playing out, you know, the record has been pushed, you know, back. A l like you know now it's finally coming out everything's been up in the air and I've just been with my instruments kind of returning to loving sound 
um, with no pretense, which I don't think I ever lost as a performing musician. I've all, like, you know, but sometimes it becomes so hyper-focused around a specific set, set of songs, what they mean to an audience and like how you perform them and what you say about them that now when I just sit around and find new chords, I was like, I can't remember the last time I figured out a new chord, you know? Um, so yeah, it's been kind of a cyclical thing there, I guess. You know, I mentioned your dad for a specific reason too. It's for a couple. Um, one of them is that the, one of the things that I really love about your songwriting is that you know, there's a long tradition of, for lack of a better phrase, only blues records making people feel better, right? Mm -hmm. And so like sad songs can do that. Um, but your songs really generally don't fall into the sort of sad sack, oh, woe is me category. You have an awareness of the other side of the equation. You have an awareness of the difficulty that other people face. And I just find it to be like remarkable. I love your lyrics and I love your approach. And so where does that come from? And like, you know, nothing's ever perfect, but I think that both of your parents seem to have given you a pretty good example of like approaching difficulty with a positive you know, thing. Yeah. And the exact, like they both have that, but your dad's got the better short story. He oh, lost, for sure. yeah. he lost <laughs> his leg in a motorcycle accident and turned that into helping other people who yeah. needed artificial limbs. Yeah. Um, and I just, I have to say this about a week, 10 days ago, we had uh, a local charity that operates nationally called Steps of Faith put on an event called Thunder Gong, and it uh, basically is fundraising uh, for people to get artificial limbs. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, and it's something, it's funny because it seems like such a hyper-specific field, and he only became, like, oh, sorry, I think my dog is upset, um, but... Uh, <laughs> you can't have that. Yeah, no, can't We'll wrap that. this up soon. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's such a hyper-specific field to get into, and he got into it because he has such a, um, like, such a visceral personal experience with it, and it reminds me so much of, like, people who struggle with addiction like having a vested interest in addiction recovery and stuff like that you know and it's almost as if I I think it's not like but it doesn't serve uh people really well to say like something bad has to happen to you like for you to be you know I think there is that kind of right. like like you have to go through some stuff to learn um and honestly like I'll tell you another short story about my dad, which is even more pertinent to now, but it's like, I, I remember in college, I like both him and my mother worked really hard and supported themselves and the whole like bootstrap, like I did it myself. Nobody helped me thing. And we can get into the mechanisms of, you know, whatever, like the bootstrap thing, dismantling it. And like, right. people did actually help you, but I, I remember I was just like heating up those Michelinas, like 89 cent fettuccine Alfredo meals in my apartment and talking to my dad on the phone. And I was like, I don't want any help. Like I, <laughs> I'm going to pay for everything. And like, I'm putting the, whatever, like my insurance in my name and I'm going to try to like put everything in my name. And he was like, do you want to be poor? <laughs> No one, well, no one had ever phrased it to me that way. And it's almost like, yeah, like when you are, when you have such an awareness of what other people have overcome, it seems ridiculous to have it handed to you. And I feel that way in music a ton. Like I, but also like the, the whole point of that story is my dad called me out on creating a fake issue for myself. Like, he was like, I know that you can, under the worst circumstances, if me and your mother were to both die, like, you're a, 
you're a smart kid. Like you can figure it out. But like, if you're working overtime and taking a full load of courses and you can't make ends meet, like, why aren't you asking for help? And there is this kind of like weird self punishing other side to the coin of it, you know, but it's like that, that man was in his forties and I was 18 years old and I thought I knew what made a person a hard worker and I didn't have the wisdom. And it's like, you know, now when I feel that with music, it's, oh gosh, I don't want to say sitting in gratitude. That's such a lame, like <laughs> cheesy it's thing. It's definitely to say. not. Uh, <laughs> that's great. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah, you know what I mean? I just, yeah, I don't know. There's a, you know, there's two sides to the coin of like using your suffering in a positive way and then thinking that you have to like self-flagellate for the benefit of other people or self-deprive for some imagined good that it's doing for someone else when it's really just like very toxic to yourself. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, it's like wrapped up in a whole bunch of. Yeah. And let I, this, can I just wrap this up by saying yeah, sure. everybody has their difficulties and I love the lens with which you look at your own. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's fabulous. So I'm really anxious to get to the rest of Little Oblivions and hear the rest of this record. Oh gosh, yeah, uh, I'm anxious for people to hear it. Yeah, and I, I did want to mention uh, that there's one track on there uh, that uh, called Favor mm -hmm. that features your bandmates from Boy Genius. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to know how that happened and if there's any more Boy Genius in your future. Oh gosh, I I hope there is. I don't know the future. I mean, we <laughs> we zoom all the time. We're all still friends. We all still send each other little voice memos, but it's just more like I don't know what their lives look like. Quarantine and COVID has thrown everybody into a you know a complete restructuring of their time and their career. Uh, so, but I hope so. Um, and yeah, they just had, they were in Nashville and we all went and sang on each other's songs and it was a really cute, like you sing on my song, I'll sing on your song, you know, like homage cause we missed each other, you know? That's just fabulous. Yeah. Our guest today, Julian Baker, Little Oblivions. Um, really looking forward to this one. It's coming out February 26th on Matador and Julian, I just can't express how grateful we are for you to take the time and, and share. Oh, of with. course. Thank you for taking the time to interview me and like ask me about my thoughts and my art. I appreciate it. I value it. Julian Baker today on the bridge.